thank you very much uh, to Kate Modden, to UCA uh, Fast Forward, and to uh, UAL, London College of Communications, for inviting me to speak here today. And thank you, everyone, for being here. This paper is in two parts. Part one, an uneasy opening, a visual, conceptual, verbal, framing, unframing, with glimpses in parallel of the photographic or rephotographic elements of my practice, often poor in Hito Steyl's sense. No explanatory narratives, no navigation offered. Instead, I want to allow the coincidence of words heard and images seen to open up readings between. Part two, a walk, a walking and reading with eight artists, with eight women and eight works, among whom a constellation of photographic forms and images are invoked and provoked in various ways. For me, these artists and works touch on the thematics of the conference, alluding to presences and absences in and out of the museum, to connections between practices, to the intersections between local and global stories, to the play and contestation of selves and others, and to the question of how women work. Part one. As an artist, writer, researcher, academic, working across disciplines, mediums, languages, Jack and Jill of all trades, mistress of none, let me begin with my ignorance, my non-knowledge, my unexpertise and ill ease. My first reflex in response to the invitation to speak here was to declare my lack of specialist knowledge. My second reflex was to question my first, so quick to self-deprecate, to presume my unsuitability, my inability to speak. I'm sure I'm not alone in succumbing to so-called imposter syndrome, that sense that I cannot, do not, should not own a particular space or territory, even though those who know me will know of my love of amateurism, of fakes and bad copies, of rip-offs and riffs on so-called originals. And while this sense, a resistance to owning and occupying, is in keeping with my impulses to deterritorialize my thinking and doing, to challenge notions of authority and authenticity, it is clear to me that I have also swallowed time and again the poisoned pill of my imagined ill fit and conflicts. Despite my long-held anti, cross, inter, intra, multi and transdisciplinary desires, I am still internally knee-jerkingly disciplined and punished by entrenched notions of knowledge, truth and value, inextricably linked to Western modernity, Eurocentric imperialism and colonialism. Despite my recent work on the AHRC Black Artists and Modernism project, which surveyed 30 out of the UK's 3,000 public art collections to find in this snapshot that barely 1% to 4% of their holdings comprise of works by artists of African and descent. Despite the multiple ways in which we then endeavored to ask over and again, how do we come to know or forget these artists and works? What are the stories that our museums tell or fail to tell? Despite trying to consciously call out normalized, internalized biases, including my own, I also have to stop myself falling unconsciously, hook, line and sinker, for all the ways in which I not only fail to be a man, but also fail to be a woman, a white woman, a black woman, a brown woman, an Asian woman, a Chinese woman. 
who wants or gets to identify as woman? Who wants or gets to identify what they do as work? As a woman, as a woman who works, I am conscious of the cumulative weight of paid and unpaid labor, creative, academic, emotional, domestic, the proliferation of spinning plates, the care one must take to refute or reclaim the derogatory labels intended to diminish us. Ambitious, abrasive, bitchy, bolshy, bossy, bubbly, ditzy, emotional, feisty, hormonal, hysterical, illogical, irrational, pushy, sassy, shrill. And the exponential effort required to be seen or heard if you are also differenced by ethnicity, by class, by religion, by language, by age, by size, by ableism. As a woman, as a woman of color, who works as an artist and a mother, I, like many others, negotiate daily the everyday sexism and racism, patriarchal capitalism, universalist feminism, neo-orientalism and resurgent yellow peronism. As a woman, as a woman of color, as a gendered, racialized, non-white subject, as a British-born, second-generation, Hong Kong Chinese immigrant, as a daughter and granddaughter of farmers turned manual laborers and blue-collar workers, the first in the family to attend university, as a sister, resistor, a niece, cousin, aunt to sometime colonial, not yet post-colonial, far from decolonized Hong Kong subjects. I am also colonially differenced. Disenchanted yet optimistic. Acutely aware of my curious privilege as I stand here speaking, exceeding categorical logic. Ever questioning, wondering how to know, think and do differently to undo decolonially. Let us hear some other decolonial voices or voices for decoloniality. Not to offer definitions, but some guidance along unmarked ways. Maria Lugones calls the analysis of racialized capitalist gender oppression the coloniality of gender. She calls the possibility of overcoming the, the, the coloniality of gender decolonial feminism. She says, quote, the deco decolonial feminist's task begins by her seeing the colonial difference, emphatically resisting her epistemological habit of erasing it. Seeing it, she sees the world anew, and then she requires herself to drop her enchantment with woman, the universal, and begins to learn about <coughs> other resistors at the colonial difference. Lugones follow, follows Annabel Quijano's analysis of coloniality or the colonial matrix of power, that is, the enduring global capitalist colonial modern system of power beginning with the 16th century incursions into the lands that became the Americas. The concept of coloniality recognizes modernity, capitalism, and colonialism as inextricably linked. Modernity and capitalism as two inseparable axes where capitalism is anchored in colonization and racialization is inseparable from capitalist exploitation. For Lagones, coloniality also names, quote, the process of active reduction of people, the dehumanization that fits them for classification, for the process of subjectification, the attempt to turn the colonized into less than human beings.
She draws on Walter Mignola's evocation of the space of colonial difference as the space where coloniality of power is enacted, adopted, adapted, rejected, integrated, or ignored. It is also the space for dialogic situations and fractured enunciations. Decoloniality begins with the recognition that we are all caught up in the colonial matrix of power. Mignola says, quote, there is no outside of it, and there is no privileged location, ethnic or sexual, from which to confront coloniality. The task of decoloniality after decolonization is redefined and focused on epistemology and knowledge as opposed to the state. Decoloniality focuses on changing the terms of the conversation. With decolonial feminism, Lagonis proffers a beginning. Quote, the questions proliferate at this time and the answers are difficult. How do we learn about each other? How do we do it without harming each other, but with the courage to take up weaving of the everyday that may reveal deep betrayals? How do we cross without taking over? With whom do we do this work? The theoretical here is immediately practical. How do we practice with each other engaging in dialogue at the colonial difference? How do we know when we are doing it? Part two, rewind and fast forward. Allow me to turn to some snapshots from and of a place and space akin, perhaps, to what Lagonis calls a fractured locus. To move in a dialogic manner, akin, perhaps, to what Trinity Minha calls a shuttling to and fro. Beginning again, only ever beginning. Shuttling, shuttering, and flickering. Rewinding via 2017, to, to 1985, 87, 88, 89. I invite you to walk with me as I trace and dwell in a momentary configuration of women, artists and works at Nottingham Contemporary. The place is here. Anchored and released by Lubaina Himid's We Will Be, from whom I borrow a title, I move between and after, or dialogically with, Mona Hartoon, Joy Gregory, Serena Bimji, Marlene Smith, Sonia Boyce, Maud Salter, and Ingrid Pollard. We are present and absent in and out of our museums. Our practices and stories, local and global, connecting, coexisting, re-existing. We contest and play ourselves and others, interrogating and embodying how women work. Consider these a series of decolonial feminist notes to self. We will be. We want, we want, we want, ever desiring, so they say, ever lacking, so they say. Whose desire, whose lack? I turn on my heel, pivoting words and works, observing heads turned, toes dipped. Lean in to read, to see, to hear, 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 hear. Lean out to speak, speak back and to. Before me, a hem of newsprint dulled, iconic heads on a riotous skirt, eyes aslant, arms crossed, back straight, pins glinting, 
feathers fan, a fan and a panoply of no, no, no. Who we will be, what, who will we be, what are our possible future insistent selves? Her sisters and mothers and daughters are ours too, and yours and his and theirs, and yet we are not merely we, but ever more than, never same. We may stand and sit and speak and march and chant and sing and yet, never are we merely one, never presume us and them. Word and image span in distance immeasurable, meshing bodies both present and absent, scripts screening desires, hovering and fading, with tenderness, longing, and laughter, English tones echo Arabic, mother-daughter tongues in cheek, his jealousy in check. Rupturing rules with sisterly intimacy, remembering in emptied houses, morning war. Where are our loved ones? Everywhere scattered. Words held behind lines, Memories reaching to breach lives lost, losses lived. An afternoon recalled, anatomy of maternal love. Nap interrupted, he nags against nonsense, disturbed by their sensual wakefulness. Trespass denied, four years, then 20. Trespasses will be. We felt happy and secure, and it was paradise compared to where we are now, in Beirut, in London, still on the move, still on the move. The place is here and already elsewhere. Here and always at least also there, and there, and there. Who we are flies out of the window. We edge, hedge our bets, in and out of frame. How we see calls for patience, endurance, as clear whites and matte blacks outline and eclipse out of darkness with lightness, elusive multiples, elusive profiles in multiple. Weak solution and waiting to unfog the image, engender a presence, enable a vision. Worn backwards, a jacket or dress unzipped. A collarless, sleeveless tee is an eye. Angular earrings, squares circled and looped, one ear and the other. Nape of neck, spine semi-exposed, hair scraped and twisted tight, a hint of skin and shoulder. Turned away, turned to listen, tilted down and up, a jawline defiant attentive. In limbo, translucent fragments line up, suspended. Some jewellery, a bird, an embroidered shoe, a pair of latex gloves discoloured by time. No spaces between perspex and photographs and muslin and text. A span of moments and places compressed, heaps of spice beneath. To and through, move along these gestures encased, enfolded, entwined, intimate and invasive, small deaths and violent acts dismissed under bureaucratic cover. Her precious metals, her metal precious, adorned and assaulted, embellished yet unembellished truths, hints at violations at home and abroad. We reserve the right, unreservedly, contentiously, to welcome or refuse to be spokespeople, specimens, special cases, no need to applaud, tolerate, placate or contain us. Allied, unaligned, atypical, predictable, exemplary and ordinary, average and extraordinary. You?
We will keep working, but we will not do your work for you, even though you may be sick and tired. When I, 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 or we pivot this space, this one-time margin, now momentary centre, a constellation of voices speak out, talk back and to, centrifugal forces, naysaying, gainsaying, no, no, no. Witness to the unsayable and not yet said. Take strength. White weave becomes a crochet sleeve for a vase and bouquet, an array of hot peach petals and leafy shards. Handmade and homemade, a DIY altar to sisters and four mothers, their histories, our histories, arts histories too. Endeavor to remember, loop the dead into the living, to remember new lineages, genealogies and old unforgettings with fake flora and fauna. Women and artists looking out, looking out for and holding each other up. Edmonia Lewis, Simon Alexander, Magdalene Adundo and Brenda Agard, some names for the many sculptors, painters, potters, photographers yet unnamed. Women and artists watching over and watching each other work, archiving one another, remaking, unmaking boundaries. Now and then, she leaves America for Europe. She paints herself flushed, violet, bruised blue. She captures her hands shaping clay. She photographs one artist for another, each on the other's shoulders a makeshift maternal totemic polemic, a portrait of our times for our times. Artificial flowers all and none, new rooms next to hers, in the room next to mine, filling with shades of black. Domestic goddesses stirring and agitating. Tarzan the white man fades into a pink and white cloud, painted out, protesting. Hollywood's backward and lazy fantasies, childlike natives less than human, despoiling child childhood dreams. English born and English born, this native keeps cool as neo-imperial emotions run high. Twelve faces pull faces, parody the parodies. Iconographies come undone and filmic frames drop, uncut and recut. She mimics the caricature, multiplies expressions, all gestures untrue. A composite composure deposing the king. I, 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 I. A comic adventurous photo booth cry. Selves squint and faint, stare wide and wider in faux conscious, unconscious states. Nonsense gives way to a decolonial dance. Otherworldly gazes break the pop cultural trance. Words fail no more. As an artist, I am also and never and no longer and more than a young black British Anglo Asian Chinese, yet red, Chinese yellow, red, white, and blue woman. And you? Newspapers tell of stowaway survivors and policemen jailed for attacks. Singed fragments spill onto a photographed stately home, the wealthy protected, remote. Divisions perceived, constructed, imposed, igniting fires. The ever-present enemy fuels phallocratic fears, heads of state wielding paranoid powers, fanning flames, ever-provoking, stoking, Named and nameless threats loom large over liberty. Promising writer dies, a shy, beautiful and considerate girl. Pakistani woman pleads guilty to murdering her husband. Lines, tears and cuts place youthful beauty 
over racialized maritocide. Who are we encouraged to mourn? A woman killed, a woman kills. A black woman killed, a black woman kills. Chasing freedoms, bearing children. Exit and enter under attack. Enter and exit, fighting back. It is as if the forests and lakes and all of landscaped nature belongs to a clean, clear, and bright natural whiteness. It is as if unnatural blackness should be confined to the besieged and dirty city, for Britain still bleaches the sweat and the blood of the enslaved and working peoples who made this nation great. Hordes teem in privileged and poor imaginations Ease is a luxury, unease the more common feeling. Romantic idols of country and city, impossible ideals of whiteness and blackness, polarities of power, buildings burning, sisters, brothers, fathers, mothers, daughters, sons. England, open your eyes. Thank you.